Hello everyone, happy to be here. So today I'll be talking to you about building a business in free cities in 2014, the pros, the cons, and other considerations. So quick overview, we'll talk about an introduction, who am I, what are the Zetis, what are the advantages to building inside them, what are the disadvantages, and then we'll overview everything and hopefully have some time for questions. So who am I? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Alex Ugorgi. I think that's the best way to learn about me and also what we're doing in Morazon and the Zetis in general. I'm a big Zeti fan and like to share what's going on and give you a real-time live information. I work for Morazon's developer. I'm a Free Cities ambassador, and I'm also a Zeti consultant. So in these various roles, I've helped to set up more than half a dozen businesses inside Morazon, including a cafe, gym, mini mart, solar farm, crypto companies, laundry mat, and many other. Uh, in particular, in the case of Morazon, almost every business I've been involved with in some capacity or another. And uh, one of the things I hope to change is that I'm one of the few people living inside a free private city. I hope next year and the year after that, I can no longer say this type of thing, but for now, I like to flex a little bit. So what are the Zetis? We've had uh, good talks from both Massimo and Gabriel about Prosper and Morazon, respectively. The Zetis are a uh, excuse me, a Honduran zone for employment and economic development, and they're the world's most advanced free city projects. There are two, although there's three Zetis, two of them you can move to right now. There's Prospera, which I would describe as a futuristic VC-backed uh, backed project trying to create the next Hong Kong. And then Morazon, which is a city showing that private cities can work for the common man. So very different visions, but both super cool, exciting projects and allow you to open companies in either of them, whether you live there or if you're remote. So what are the advantages of opening a business in free cities? I think you can guess some of these, but I'll get into them. So the number one is the economy, the high economic freedoms offered by the Zetis. Prosper did a study on their doing business ranking, and I believe they were top 10 in the entire world. So this gives you an idea of some of the economic freedoms you get. In Prosper, some of them include a legal tender for crypto, securities laws that are much more accessible and reasonable, fintech licenses. You can even create your own licenses. I think that's one of the coolest features of Prospera. You can pick best practices from different OECD countries to regulate your industry. You can even have multiple different regulations for the same project. You could have a building that has electricity regulated by one country's standards and plumbing by another country's standards. So they've designed a very cool, flexible business environment that's pretty unique in the world. Morazon takes a little bit of different approach. They don't believe that business regulations are the only vehicle in which to have a, a good place to live, a safe environment. They take the entrepreneurial community approach, which allows you to use leases and the ability to not renew leases to regulate things. So you don't need to have the perfect resident contract, 3,000 pages of regulations. You can just have a test and feel approach. Let them in for three months, let them experiment with their business. If things get too crazy, then you can discuss with them whether or not they're a good fit and if the lease should be renewed. So very different approaches. They each have their advantages. And both Zetis have very low taxes. 5% is the top personal effective tax rate in both zones. Another big advantage of the Zetis is the cost. So most of the jurisdictions mentioned by Alex Voss or others with high economic freedom, Dubai, Monaco, Singapore, Hong Kong, these aren't the most affordable places. In Zetis, in particular Morazon, you can get a 60 meter square apartment for as little as $120 a month. And industrial rent is as low as $3 a meter square, but get in soon because the prices will go up at least a little bit. 
Labor, similarly, is affordable. Minimum wage is around $400 a month. Incorporation costs in Morazon, I think they might have the world record. $10 is the price for incorporating. Uh, you may need to buy registered agents and other services, but just for the pure government fee price, $10. And Prosper's $550 approximately is also extremely affordable by global standards for major jurisdictions. Then the logistics are also very good. In Central America, we're three hours or less from the U.S., and containers can arrive in less than a week. But the, for me, the fantastic legal environment is one of the most underrated things. Having good property and contract rights is a huge value add in the Latin American region, unfortunately. And the arbitration systems in the Zeti are very interesting, very innovative. In Morazon, it can be as cheap as $50 to do an arbitration. And we actually had our first major arbitration last month. And it was a very speedy process. Justice was served. And it was by someone who only makes a few hundred dollars a month. So in normal Honduran judicial system, it would have been completely inaccessible for them. But thanks to the Zetis, they were able to get a legal ruling to justify their grievance. And there's also strong labor autonomy that helps to reduce the cost of hiring people, which is becoming a bigger and bigger problem around the world. But my favorite thing is the supportive community and governments in both places. Uh, business is often a fight to do anything. You have to fight the government, fill out their paperwork. It seems almost as if they don't want businesses. Inside the Zetis, you have the opposite experience. There's always team members available. They help give you guidance, advice, talk to this guy, talk to that guy, and they're really trying to create more business, and it makes sense. The more businesses, the more residents the Zetis have, the more profit they can make. So it's a true alignment of incentives that can benefit you greatly. But it's not all perfect. There are some disadvantages of the Zetis and free cities in general. And I think we can fix most of these over time, but it's important to be aware of these, both so you can fix it and also you can have informed, good decisions for your business. So the first one is lots of education is required. These are very new zones. Things are different. They're done differently in both of them. So you may think you know how business formation should work, how taxes work, but you have to really familiarize yourself with the regulations of your respective zone to make sure you are in compliance and you do indeed understand that things can be different in the zones from your home jurisdiction. That's on the internal side. In addition, there's the external piece. When you're interacting with other parties and they hear that you're registered in Ciudad Morazan or Prospera, they're going to say, what? I've never heard of that country. Where is that? And you'll have to educate them. This is a special economic zone. This isn't just some paper I made in Photoshop. This is a real government. Here's the registry site. You can verify my company. This is an education process, which brings us to our next point, is the lack of financial links. Because Zetis and private cities in general are very new, the banking and other financial counterparties that you would get are not familiar with them. So you're going to have a lot more difficult time opening not just banks, but even crypto, which we look at as more innovative, open-minded firms. They still ask you, what country are you from? And then there's not going to be necessarily the right box to check for you. You may have to reach out to support. Often, if you reach out, you can find ways, but it's not always possible and it's not always easy. I would also talk about the uncertainty. Massimo mentioned this. Gabriel mentioned this. Political uncertainty is going to be a real factor to consider for businesses operating inside a Zeti. We do not know what will happen. While it's feeling quite optimistic right now, things are, are looking better than they have been, there's still always a risk that something could go wrong. This is not exclusive to the, the Zetis or free cities, but it's something that you should definitely take into account. The same thing is the uncertainty of recognition. Is your financial license inside the Zeti going to be recognized by other jurisdictions, your corresponding banks? You don't know. So this is an uncertainty you have to take into account. Just because you can get a local license doesn't mean it will be 
recognized in other jurisdictions. Same thing with the reputation. Reputation matters a lot, and there's some uncertainty over the reputation of being in this zone that's often attacked by the media. Could that negative reputation or hit pieces impact your business? This is something you need to take into account. So what's the, the summary of all of this? I would say Zetis and free cities offer incredible economic freedom, but we're still on the ground floor. We still have a lot of challenges to smooth over, problems to fix. Many of these can be fixed by entrepreneurs, investors, people like yourself, helping to expand the recognition and stability of the Zetis and other free cities. The more we have, many of these problems will go away. But in the meantime, what businesses are good? I would say, ironically, the heavily regulated businesses have done very well, especially in, in Prospera. If you want to start a bank and need a banking license, you can get that more easily inside Prospera than another jurisdiction. If you want to do some kind of medical research or other regulated activity, the Zetis are open to help you get a license, find a custom regulation, and get you in business as easily and safely as possible. Likewise, I think it's a good fit for businesses that want to operate inside the host country that often has poor legal stability or other issues. You can take advantage of the rule of law, the arbitration, and general safety of the Zetis and use that to your advantage. And then lastly, entirely online companies, especially crypto ones, the you know, mailbox companies, so to speak. The Zetis are a great jurisdiction. They're very friendly, they're very innovative, and it's worth considering for those type of businesses. Businesses that are bad are those that require strong payment rails. You're not going to be able to get Stripe, PayPal, all of those services you may take for granted in the near future. Over time, I think they'll become accessible, just like they're accessible in Hong Kong, Singapore, and others. But in the early stages, those companies are going to be risk adverse and likely to take a wait and see approach. Likewise, if you rely heavily on institutions that are easy for the government to attack, such as we've seen with customs, you don't want to be a factory that's importing a ton of materials, exporting a ton of materials, and there's a political uh, pressure on the customs agency to make your life difficult. You don't want to expose your business to that risk in the short term. And the same thing is true for businesses with a lot of upfront investment. You want to make sure you understand the investor protections and other lay of the land before you spend a lot of capital. And I wanted to end on some wise words from Novel, a Twitter legend. He said, if you want to live in the future, live in the freest place around, because eventually all the innovators and creators will show up there. I think that's true, both for you as a person and also your business. So I hope you'll consider both visiting the Zetis, maybe moving there, and maybe opening your business there as well. And I'm happy to take a couple questions if we have time. As far as the ZAs go, which ones, uh, how would one make a decision as to which one one wanted to go to? Um, are there any differentiations that you'd like to outline? Yeah, I'd say it depends very much on your business, even from what kind of labor do you need. The Morazon is located in the industrial region. There's lots of blue-collar type workers. If you're going to open some kind of small factory or other business like that, you'd want to be in Morazon. Same thing if power prices play a role. If power is cheaper on the mainland than on the island. If you're trying to do something innovative in terms of regulations, exciting VC funding, then I think Prosper would be a much better fit as well. So you'd have to assess it on what type of business you're opening and go from there. Hello? Hello. Uh, hi there. I just
Honduras. That's a national matter, but in terms of the ability to rent and live in Morazan, that is very accessible, and I, I know better than most. I live there myself. So it's a fun place to live, and it's cool to see the growth around you every day. Thank you. We're out of time. Thank you, everyone.